Welcome to a new video. This time around, we will be focusing on module number three. We'll be seeing what we have covered in module three and summarize for you. The, before I go ahead though, I wanna say that in module two, what we did was we looked at, let's say that this is the area that I'm interested in finding the pressure values. This can be under water or some kind of a liquid, or it can be under gas as well, right? So I was able to obtain my pressure at any point that I want. Right now, in module three, the focus was to convert these pressure values to the forces. Initially, this may seem a fairly easy task because I, as I know my pressure, I multiply by the area, I got myself force. However, as you have realized, I, was, I needed to have like 10 videos to explain it, so it's not that straightforward. The issue is this, the pressure is not constant. As we discussed in module number two, if I go in this direction, or towards you and I, the pressure is constant. Good. The problem is when I go down, the pressure increases. As I go up, the pressure decreases, right? So that complicates the things a bit. So let's say that I have an arbitrary kind of a surface over here that I'm trying to find the forces of, right? And what I'm gonna do is I divided these forces into two components. The first component, I looked at from the pushing it about, that will be the first force. And the second force is in the horizontal direction. In this case, it will be pushing this way, assuming this is the where the liquid is, okay? Um, and we showed several methods to calculate these components. At first, what I'm gonna do is let's start with the force that is pushing it down or in the vertical direction. Let's think about this from salt mechanics. Let's say that I have myself a surface and on top of it, I have a block sitting on top of a table, the block of a metal, right? What would be the force on the table? Well, the answer is fairly straightforward. That would be the weight of the block. So in fluid statics, what will be happening is identical to that, except on my surface now I have a fluid, okay? So what I need to do is I need to calculate the weight of the fluid above my surface all the way to the free surface and see how much it is. And I'm gonna put the uh, formula there, but you will see that the weight will be the specific weight times the volume. Specific weight is gravity times density, fairly manageable. The volume can get kind of complicated depending on the shapes. If I have a very complicated shape, it may be complicated, but it is what it is, okay? Um, and then the second type of force that I'm gonna have over here will be the horizontal force that is pushing in this direction. And when I said that, did we need to be careful about this one? I see some issues in the exams related to this. I am looking at the projected vertical surface. Let's say that I have a complicated surface right over here. I'm not looking at that surface. I'm looking at the projected surface of this. What is it in this vertical phase, okay? So actually, if you realize this, the process is easier, okay? Um, and I look at what is the force on there, and I write it. Let's start with the horizontal one. I showed you three separate ways to calculate this. The first was the integration method. I looked at the I take a small strip, I calculated the force on that, and then I integrated fairly standard engineering approach that we take. The second approach was a formulation method. I'll, I'll put it here as well, but basically the force will be equal to specific weight times HC. HC is the geometric center of the shape. Which shape? The original shape or the one that is on the vertical face, projected on the vertical face? The one on the projected face. Okay, be careful. Um, that will be the HC times the area of, again, that will be the vertical phase, not the original area. And the third, another approach that I take was, I do know that the free surface, my pressure is zero, if I use gauge terminology, and as I go down, I increase it linearly, right? And the slope of that is specific weight, right? Um, so from that, I will be able to obtain my pressure values at the start and at the end point of my surface. And from here, what I can obtain is I can obtain my average pressure. Once I know my average pressure, I will multiply by the area and I will get my pressure. So that's another method. And I solved several examples. There are lecture videos on that, including a, a one example where I looked at if we have more than one fluid on top of each other, well, what's gonna happen there, okay? So you may wanna visit those videos to understand more. Then another, another thing that I looked at was where is this force acting? The pressure force, okay, I have a pressure force, but where is it acting, right? 
And the way that I did was, be careful about this one as well. So the y direction this time around is aligned with the surface, right? So the y direction is that. And I write an equation, and everything is coming from actually to regular statics that you've already taken. So it's going to be yr, where the force is acting, will be equal to yc, and yc is the geometric center, again, the formula is up there, plus ixc divided by yc times a. Okay? And what happens in reality is that this yr becomes a little bit more than yc. So it's fairly close to the yc, the geometric center. It's still always it's a little bit about that. Okay? This is especially a good tactic if you're taking the FE exam, so you can eliminate some of the choices if you're not running out of time. All right? Um, so I have done the same thing in the x direction. X is like going in or out, like between you and I, right? And in that case, what I said is a very similar formula that I'm going to put up there. I'm not going to read it. Um, and what the important thing is, if my geometry is symmetric in the x or y centroid axis, then I'm, not going, to have, I'm going to have i, x, y, c in the equation will be equal to 0. So then you will see that my I, x, r will be equal to x, c. So that's fairly easy for many of the geometries that we deal day-to-day in, -day in fluid statics. And I also showed you rectangular cross-section, circular cross-section, triangular cross-section, half a circle. It gave you everything that you need about the IXYC, IXC, so you will be able to calculate uh, information that is needed. And also, for the forces on an inclined surface, let's say that I have a surface like that, right? Um, what I said was, if you notice, there's an angle, right, a theta angle. So looking at that theta angle, I can get the relationship between Fz and Fy. Okay? So then I don't have to calculate both of them. I simply can calculate the one that is my preference and then go from there. I can find the other one if needed. Okay? Something to know. And then at, towards the end of this uh, video, lecture videos, I looked at buoyancy and stability. Right? And the buoyancy is basically explains us why Partially submerged or fully submerged, things float. We pretty much relied on the Archimedes principle, and in the, as Archimedes principle says, I look at the weight of the displaced fluid, whether it's fully submerged or mere partially submerged. So it's fairly straightforward, and I, I did solve examples for you. So you may want to watch those lecture videos as well. And in, the, in addition to that, I explain you the, why the stability of ships, as an example, is important. And I'll also explain you where you should put the load for the stability purposes. So this pretty much sums up the module three. Now, in module four, we will be starting the kinematics, fluid kinematics topics.